absolutely follow the Zoom go to webinar protocol so that I can start it up and then say, can you see my screen? Can you, can you? Um, so at this time, uh, we should be all good. And uh, I'll, I'll just shoot and, and people can uh, come in uh, and, and well. Um, again, thanks so much for joining. Um, your hosts for today are myself and Bradley. Um, I'm the founder of Thinkst. Uh, my name is Harun. I'll be droning on for most of the next hour. Brad, you'll be correcting me, kicking me under the table for stuff that I'm saying wrong. Um, if you guys, uh, if you folks have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them. Uh, in the meantime, in text, Bradley will collate them and ask them, or we'll just open the mic later and you can, uh, you can scream that stuff out. Um, that's about it for the for the housekeeping. Um, we'll shoot the questions. We'll we'll handle them. Um, again, we've done one public webinar like this before, um, one corporate webinar. Um, so it's likely to be less smooth than you're probably expecting. Um, we'll resemble uh, strategically shaved primates trying to do this. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to uh, forgive that stuff. Um, before doing this, we did, I did a quick Google on the rules for webinars and rules for engaging webinars. And, and essentially, there's two. Um, don't do live demos and don't use memes and GIFs. Um, we figure we should make it very clear that both of those are dead. Um, in truth, we're going to do almost everything uh, with live demos in part because we think uh, canned demos are a bit of a cop-out. So, so you might uh, hear me typing more than is, is normal for webinars, and you might see some uh, periodic jitters as the demo god, gods punish us, but it's kind of par for the course. Um, so for the most part, we're going to do just a handful of slides and, and mostly just live demos and, and talk about our products. Um, so why we built Canary, fundamentally, there's one rule for it or one reason behind it, and that's because this is a stupid stat. Um, the fact that most companies find out so late that they've been breached. And, and back in, in 2012, the number was 92%. Um, the average uh, dwell time for attackers was like 200 days. And, and what you'll find is over time, we're not really getting better at that stuff, right? It, it, like the shocking truth is that uh, no matter when the stats are compiled, people just find out way too late that they've been compromised. Um, in the last few days, uh, Mandiant put out their security effectiveness report. And, and again, the stats in it are, are atrocious for, for us as an industry like 4% of reconnaissance activity that they tested generated a meaningful alert. And, and so the, the bottom line, the thing that we, we fight so much against is this logic that says that companies are spending money on security, but still don't know when it matters. And historically, we've pointed to the big breaches. We've spoken about RSA because even security companies go that way. We mentioned Belgicom because like, Three years after they were, they were owned, they still didn't know it. And, and of course, the one we like to mention is that even the NSA, with all of their resources, didn't know that they were getting Snowden uh, till he was on a plane. And, and fundamentally, it's simple. There's a bazillion ways to break into your network, and, and trying to catch all of them uh, will keep you busy forever. And, and why we like Canary is because once someone's on the inside of your network, the activities generally follow a pretty easy pattern that you can index on. Um, and, and typically this means that people break in, they find machines, they find loot that they want. They then move on to other machines uh, using the access that they've gotten. And this lateral movement is easy to spot. So once you drop canaries, um, the next time that attacker comes through, he trips one of them and you get a high quality alert that badness is happening on your network. And of course, this is an old idea. Why haven't people been doing it? Because everyone's struggling to manage the nodes on their network. Giving them more nodes on their network to manage is just not a great idea. 
In, in fact, if you look at that Mandiant report, uh, the one that came out last week carefully, it's, it's got an interesting snippet. When it talks about how people are missing all of these alerts, it says, um, we think that one of the problems is that people are buying these security things and then deploying them with default configurations or they're not tweaking them enough post-deployment. And, and for a long time, this was the security industry's crutch, right? Companies get owned while they use our products. And then we say, well, you didn't configure us. Well, you didn't deploy us. And, and we see lots of people in the space. Uh, like first, you pay them a basquillion for the product. And after you've paid them a basquillion, you must then send your staff on training, which you pay them for to become certified engineers on their product. And, and so we've built Canary to be the anti this. Um, literally, you get your Canaries, you deploy them in four minutes, and they're useful to you four minutes after you've deployed them. And one of the things that, that Canaries ended up being, um, uh, uh, and we were a little bit lucky for this, is that they're really hard to deploy them wrong. So, so you get some people who think really hard before they deploy their Canaries and they want to come up with good deception stories and they want to use AI and machine learning to match the environment. And actually, just historically, empirically, that's not necessary. Like the only way to deploy a canary wrong is to not do it. Because if you've got a network filled with Windows boxes and one box looks odd, like it's a Sun Solaris box, attackers on your network have to touch that box because anyone who's been pen testing long enough will know that the box that looks odd on the network is the one they didn't know how to configure so well. Like they've got Windows skills, but... They didn't know how to configure that sun box that's actually managing their disk array or the Linux box that's there to manage their SCADA system. And, and so literally the only way to deploy a canary wrong is to not do it. Um, so um, I'm going to go now and actually show you um, uh, the canary console. Um, what's going to happen? I just want to take a quick pause there. Um, Bradley is just doing a sound check to see if everyone can can hear things. Um, uh, yes, it's, um, everybody appears to be able to hear you. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you for stopping me to tell me everyone could hear me, Bradley. Um, <laughs> you started. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> um, so... So um, fundamentally, the, the, canary, uh, the Canary solution works like this. You'll have your Canaries that sit out on your network, and we have a hosted console uh, that belongs to you that sits out in AWS. And, and so at this point, I'm going to uh, go straight into a demo. So, so if, if we take a look here, um, what you should be seeing, um, I'll start my webcam also. Um, super straightforward. You should be seeing a single canary um, that's on my desktop. And then I'm going to actually log into the canary console. And unsurprisingly, at this point, you see a single canary on my console um, that currently claims to be a Cisco device. Um, and what we're going to do here is quickly put that canary through its paces a little. Um, but with a quick look at this console, you'll notice it's pretty Spartan looking, um, not because we're lazy, but, but mainly because we're not trying to be your single pane of glass. Like we're not trying to dominate your thinking. Drop your canaries on day one, forget about them, don't come back to them. And when you get an alert, uh, you'll know about it. Um, so if you take the single canary that's on my desktop, I'm going to grab its IP address. And what we're going to do is just ask Nmap uh, to give it a quick scan. Um, and in this case, you'll notice before the scan was complete, um, Nmap, uh, the canary is actually thrown up its alert to say, listen, you being port scan. The alert on its own is interesting because we're not just able to tell you you're being port scanned. We're able to tell you that you're being Nmap OS scanned. Okay, and already that's interesting because if you have to ponder that some sort of arms race is going to develop between attackers trying to profile us and us trying to hide. One of the true things is we can now play that game. So someone trying to nmap us is a pretty clear sign of badness. 
Now, if you look at these, uh, what Nmaps come back with, you'll notice the services look like a Cisco, the MAC address looks like a Cisco. Even Nmaps TCP IP stack fingerprint comes back and says that this is a Cisco. Um, and in fact, if, if we were to now look at these services, um, what you'll notice is um, it's going to look uh, pretty Cisco-ish. Okay, so we'll try our usual set of usernames and passwords. And, and what you'll subtly see in the background is that Canary is not going to try to throw off a ton of noise. So in the background, we've collated those alerts. And instead of giving you 100 failed username password attempts, we've got one where we say, hey, listen, someone's brute forcing us, and here's the credentials they tried. Or if you see valid credentials, it becomes, hey, someone's using valid credentials against you and you've got a problem. Um, on the console itself, um, we've also got a graphical view. So if you went in, you could see at a glance, this is one person generating all of these alerts uh, against a single canary. And, and you can also go here and wipe it out. Um, now, what's interesting is um, the type of services that the canary will expose to you um, and, and the kind of functionality that you have depends on what your canary is running. So, so I cheated a little because I spoke about how easy a canary is to deploy. And then the first thing I did was showed you a canary that's already deployed. And so what I'm going to do really quickly um, is deploy another one uh, live. So if you look at that one that's, uh, that's just put down next to it, you'll see it boots up. You'll see it's blue. Um, and the reason that LED is blue is because it's essentially saying um, it's now ready to talk Bluetooth on the network. Okay, so, so one of the ways that Canaries can be configured is via Bluetooth. Um, and essentially, that just means, uh, that just gives us an easy way to talk to them. So once we've connected over Bluetooth, all we're going to do is surf to setup.canary.tools. Okay, and at this point, we'll be surfing to this device purely via Bluetooth. And what I'm going to do here is go in um, really quickly and give this a new name. Um, I'm going to go in and give this a new name, and I'm going to say this is actually sitting on my desktop. But we'll get a chance to come back to this. I'm going to say I want this to be a uh, disk station NAS. Okay, so I'm going to go in there and make this a disk station NAS. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Well, if it's a disk station, it's going to have a share. So let's call the share secret. And we'll create a new folder in it called webinar. And in webinar, I'm going to create a new uh, Word doc called secret file. OK, and everything else I'm going to leave exactly the same. And if you've seen uh, a Canary set up before, essentially what happens at this point is uh, crypto keys are generated on the device. This device then needs to connect to our console to tell our console, here's your crypto key. Um, and essentially, that's it configuration-wise. Um, if you look at your console, you'll now see that that canary is ready to be added. Um, and essentially, at this point, that's it for configuration, right? This canary is going to reboot. The first time it reboots, you'll notice its LED is red, essentially saying, hey, I'm up, but I can't talk encrypted to your console yet. And as soon as it's able to establish that uh, encrypted communication, the light goes green, and the canary is alive in your console. So, so literally at that point, um, in those few seconds, you've gone from not having a canary on your network to now having this fake distation NAS on your network. Um, and if we were to look at the services that this disk station uh, then offered us, um, so if we uh, nmapped it, um, what you should see at this point is the services on it look like a Synology NAS. Its MAC address is a Synology NAS. But the most important thing is if you look at its services, um, if you now surf to it, it's going to look like a valid Synology NAS on your network. And when the, the attacker finds it and tries to log in, um, you're going to get your one alert that tells you, hey, listen, somebody just tried to log in. And here's the details that we've got from your attacker. Um, and more importantly, um, because this was a disk station NAS, 
it also means that someone's allowed to hit it um, over SMB, right? So if they were to go in on SMB and try to map to it, um, it's going to ask them to authenticate. Um, Canaries can be enrolled in Active Directory. Um, here we see our folders. There's our webinar folder. And if an attacker tries to open secret file.doc, he gets a random password protected file or random file size file. Nothing for him there, but you get the all important alert that tells you nobody should be accessing this share, but Bob from accounting jested. And it means that either Bob's evil or someone stolen Bob's details. Um, so, so for that, it's dead simple. If you've got a canary, if you've got the hardware devices, you go in, you drop them in and they're good to go. Um, and of course, the, the other thing that you can do uh, with our canaries is you don't have to deploy them over Bluetooth the way I just did. Um, since almost version 1.6, you can click on a canary and say, hey, I don't want you to be a disk station NAS anymore. I want to reconfigure you from the console. And so I'll really quickly go in here and say, hey, I actually want you to be a file server. Um, and uh, you can see the different options that you could make a canary here. Um, again, I'll, well, let's let's take a look at it. Something that's interesting is canaries are made so that they they dead simple in the simplest form, but allow you to do really complex things if you want to. So, for example, if we go here and say I want this to be a Windows 2016 file share, you'll notice a bunch of changes cascaded down for me. Um, we changed its stack fingerprint. We changed its MAC address. Um, let's turn on port scan detection, for example. And, and you'll notice that almost all the time, we make presets for you. But if you want to, there's a lot of flexibility. So if you choose to run a web server, for example, we'll give you a whole bunch of templates. But we'll also let you completely supply your own web route. So with a few clicks, you can make the it's an internet server. Um, you can decide to upload certificates to it and run it as a HTTPS server. And, and in fact, all of the protocols that we offer, which are written in a sandboxed uh, memory-safe language, um, will give you more functionality that you can play with. Um, one of the cute ones, for example, is a custom TCP service will allow you to really quickly go in and start creating fake services on fake ports. So you can say, hey, the moment anyone uh, connects to you on 1234, reply with 404 error. Um, and, and you can just keep adding more services uh, like this. Um, we saw the web route before. I'm going to go in and create a new folder in this web route, and let's just call it foo. Um, and instead of documents this time, let's call it secret documents. Um, but, but at this point, it's straightforward. And I'm going to say, OK, let's deploy this new configuration. And what you should see happening differently this time, because this time we're not connected to it over Bluetooth, is uh, essentially the next time that canary checks in, that canary gets told, hey, I've got a new config for you. Um, essentially, the config is going to go down from the console to that canary. That canary is going to apply it, and that's going to be good to go. Um, something that's worth noting here is all the communication between these canaries and this console are happening over DNS. So even if you've got a really complex network, um, it's just DNS going clean through. Um, and part of the reason we do that is you now don't have to make holes in your network and reconfigure things. Um, again, it just works. Um, so you'll notice here that Canary's uh, LED switched off. Um, it essentially got the new config. It applied the new config. And the next time it comes up, um, it's no longer disk station NAS on my network. Um, it's now a uh, Windows box on my network. Um, and uh, obviously, being a Windows box means that it'll have a whole bunch of uh, Windows services um, as we've configured it. And, and again, one of the uh, one of the interesting truths about this is you can deploy a Canary as a SCADA equipment, as a mainframe, as a switch, but literally just a well-placed share on your network. 
um, will catch so many uh, attackers, so many malicious insiders um, that it's it's worth it just uh, as it is. Um, so if we take these uh, deployments, at this point, what we've shown you is uh, our Canary in its normal hardware version. Okay, and, and Canaries as hardware have proven themselves successful across the planet, right? Like we've literally seen uh, on all seven continents, Canaries catching people. And of course, Canaries are not just hardware, right? So, so especially now when you're sitting at home and, and you want ways to deploy them, um, what becomes interesting is uh, some of the other platforms. So VMware Canaries, AWS Canaries, uh, Canaries that live inside of your uh, GCP. Um, and, and what we've done is made sure that the same amount of work that we put into making Canary easy um, when it was hardware, that we do the same amount of work uh, to make sure that your Canaries work uh, on other platforms. So if we take a look at virtual Canaries, for example, literally, you just go into setup go down to Virtual Canary. And you'd notice down here, we've got uh, Virtual Canary licenses. And what I'm gonna do first is download the VMX. Okay, so, so if you wanted to, um, you hit VMX, and essentially what's gonna happen here is you're going to get a uh, VMX that you can then copy to your desktop. So I'll just copy that. And this VMX is custom built uh, for your console on the fly. And what that means is all you'd really have to do is go in and double click that and boot it up. And essentially what you'll see is just by virtue of that virtual canary booting, um, you now get a new bird in your console. Okay, so, so literally all that's going to happen here is you downloaded the VMX, um, you run it in your virtualization software, and the first time this canary boots, um, you'll hear a few beeps as this uh, canary boots up. And literally to your console, it then reports in and says, hey, I'm a new bird. Um, how do you want to use me on this network? Okay, and, and there's, there's literally nothing else that's needed. Um, you've now got a virtual canary run. And, and if your license has allowed it, you could copy this into 10 different canaries um, and you've then got uh, 10 different uh, virtual canaries running on your network. Um, so this is the point where we considered showing you a video to save time, but, but uh, we'll let it run. So literally you confirm, um, you'll see this canary is already, uh, uh, is now waiting to check in. And once this canary checks in, um, it essentially becomes something that you can now uh, configure uh, exactly like you were configuring um, any of your other canaries. Um, so we'll we'll give that canary a few seconds uh, to check in uh, over DNS like that. And now we can go in, treat it exactly like any of our other canaries. Um, I'm going to go in and call this guy 04 mainframe 04. Um, and uh, we'll say he's sitting on my hard drive. Um, and in terms of its personality, um, I'm going to take this uh, this person and make it an IBM mainframe. And I'm going to leave everything else uh, exactly as is. And, and what you should see again, um, because we really, really aimed this uh, to be simple, simple to drop and simple to operate, is what's going to happen now is this new config, this canary, or this canary is going to pull it. Um, it's going to reboot. And at that point, we've got an IBM mainframe running on our, on our network. And, and you'll remember that the, the key uh, point with canaries is that attackers who find them have to touch them. But the interesting thing is that it shouldn't be tons of work um, for us to actually do these deployments. And, and what you see here literally uh, with me doing them live is you talking about a few clicks by someone who's not particularly uh, bright or good at computing, and uh, you end up with what you need uh, on your network. And, and so at this point, uh, you've now got this IBM mainframe running on your network. 
and and all the attacks that you expect uh, attackers to throw at it when they're on your network are going to show up, and and literally, it's zero work going forward. So so that's that's what it takes. Um, I showed you that you could download uh, the VMX, and of course, very few enterprises are running uh, Fusion or running their uh, virtual networking that way. Um, it's much more likely that you're going to be running uh, something like ESX server or something like that. And, and what you'll notice here is if you're running uh, some big corporate, um, again, all it means is you go into ESX server, you say, I want to create a virtual machine. Um, we'll go and we'll give this virtual machine uh, a name like Windows 10. Um, and then all it takes is for you to drag that OVA file um, into that uh, ESX server. Um, you say yes, you give it the network, you say I'm done with it. And literally at that point, uh, you've deployed your VM um, to your ESX server. Um, at, uh, you're going to get a little bit of slowness because you're literally uh, pushing this VM from my machine um, to your uh, ESX server. But, but literally, the, the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that no matter what the platform is, we've kind of taken it to the point where security can even tell um, ops, hey, please boot this. Um, you boot it and it's done. And, and that's something that we've taken all the way back from our hardware. So, so we've got customers, for example, who say, can you please ship these three hardware canaries to this address in China. Um, we ship them, they show up on their console and they configure them. Um, in this case, all we do is we say, hey, here's an OVA file, put this through your ESXi. Um, that OVA file goes through this ESXi. Um, you can see ESXi has now digested it. Um, effectively, it'll uh, boot that machine. And the next thing that you'll see is uh, you've now got a new VM waiting to be configured, except this time uh, running inside of uh, this uh, ESX, ESX server. Um, so that comes through. It says, hey, you can commission him. Um, like before, this canary waits to be configured. Um, we'll give it a few seconds to check in. And, and again, the, the wait that you're seeing here, which is in the order of seconds, is actually just virtual infrastructure booting up. Um, so it's, it's nothing pre-configured. Um, it's uh, nothing up our sleeve. It's literally drop the canary, and at that point, it's there for you to configure. So down here, this should be predictable. We can now click on it. We can now say, hey... Um, I want you to be uh, some sort of uh, SCADA equipment. So we'll call it SCADA1, and we'll call it uh, in our air gap. And, and this time I'll go down and say, I want you to be a Siemens PLC. Um, and, and I'm going to leave, uh, and, and you'll notice if you're doing Siemens PLC, it's going to talk good Modbus, and it's going to talk Modbus that's configured uh, as a Siemens device. Um, but, but literally at that point, uh, it's dead forward, uh, dead straightforward. Um, I'm going to show you uh, one more Canary deployment before I uh, pause and start talking uh, Canary tokens. Um, but, but, but literally at this point, uh, I know it's monotonous, but, but the pitch is literally... This is dead simple. Drop the canary. It's up and running. Um, it's going to be believable, and attackers can't resist it. Um, literally, it's what they there for on your network. They're going to touch it. Um, but, but almost 100% of our pitch is this should be dead easy, so easy that you do it on day one, and it should be effective uh, just with uh, that amount of work. Um, so you'll see at this point, uh, this is rebooted. And uh, at this point, we've literally now got SCADA equipment um, uh, running on our network. And, and so if we wanted to, um, we could go uh, back to our Nmap um, and, and now start uh, playing with this, uh, with this Siemens device. Um, so, so I'm going to uh, 
leave this for a sec. Um, the thing that you should be noticing here, uh, that's interesting. Um, the thing that you should be noticing here um, is uh, dead simple just works. And what I'm going to show you now is, is the final uh, for the Canary demo. And that's the fact that you can do exactly the same thing um, in your cloud environment. So if you go down here to Cloud Canary, um, you'll see this uh, server has been configured uh, to work in US East. Um, we click OK, go. Literally, um, it takes you to uh, your EC2 page. You just go review and launch. Um, launch. I acknowledge. Um, and literally at that point, that's it. Um, in the same way that we booted that VMX canary, in the same way that we booted um, our ESXi canary, um, what's going to happen now is inside of EC2, um, that AWS instance is going to spin up. It's going to connect back to the console to say, hey, your AWS canary is now uh, waiting to be configured. And at that point, we can give it a personality and it runs. And, and the value of, of having birds like that, even in your EC2 environment, um, early on, we were a little in two minds for how useful that sort of stuff would be. But as time has gone on, um, you're starting to see that stuff become super obvious. Like if you start to look at uh, cloud compromises today, you'll see that the same old style attacks still happen where someone says, I was able to access RF, this app. It meant that I could start port scanning the internal network. I port scanned the entire range and found these interesting boxes. And again, that's exactly when your canary sitting in that VPC shouts and says, something just touched me. Something just found me on port 23 or port 22 and connected to me. Um, and literally, it's do the work on day one. Forget about it forever. And when it matters, you're going to get your alert that tells you, hey, um, bad stuff is, is currently happening. Um, so from all of these, um, the Cloud Canary was the slowest to come home. Um, we say yes. Um, at this point, the instance is running in EC2. Um, and it's literally just uh, waiting for us uh, to connect to it, waiting for us to uh, configure it. Um, you give it a few seconds, that bird checks in. Um, and at that point, much like those others, we get to tell it uh, what we want it to be inside of EC2 and what services we want, uh, want it to be running. Um, I'm not even going to go in um, and do this because at this point, it's perfectly uh, predictable what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to pause quickly um, to see if uh, there's questions um, just before I, I move on. Um, so, so I'll yeah. uh, quickly pause uh, to hit some questions. Dear H, there's a question uh, from one of the attendees that's, that asks, um, Canaries are dead simple to deploy. Um, however, he finds that there isn't a good practice for leading attackers to, a, to Canaries. Is there any info that you can give him on uh, leaving breadcrumbs that, uh, that would direct attackers to, to the devices? Yeah, it's uh, so it's a it's a great question. Um, so so it's something that that early on we felt pretty strongly that that well deployed canaries would lead people or, or like would get discovered on their own. Um, but but it's something that we are doing more work around now. Um, we've got a a thing called a, a guide to birding up on our website. Um, so if you go uh, canary tools forward slash guide you'll see a bunch of interesting ways uh, to deploy canaries. And, and a bunch of them um, almost have natural lead-ins for ways to be discovered. So for example, if you've got a Windows box uh, with an open file share, and then you'll have uh, people, you can have people in your company mapping drives to them. Um, so when that person gets owned, um, there's a map drive that then leads to the canary. Or we've got customers uh, who make a permanent connection to a canary from all the hosts in their DMZ. And essentially what's going to happen there is someone's going to own one of those boxes in the DMZ, do a net stat to see what it's connected to, 
and then you if effectively get pointed to this box running fake MySQL and fake SSH, which you then reach out and touch. Um, so, so there's a bunch of ways. Um, if like, I'll we'll be happy to chat uh, specifically uh, uh, to you. But, but mostly, what we found uh, again is that people seriously over-index on it, and we've almost never seen a pen test, for example, happen without pen testers hitting the canaries. And so I think it's one of those things that people worry a lot about that ends up solving uh, solving itself. Um, but, uh, but I'm happy to have the discussion uh, further and, and we can certainly, uh, certainly get it. Um, shall we take one more question and then we'll, uh, we'll hit yeah. others uh, after that, sure. Yeah, there's there's a question on where um, canaries can be built. So the question is whether they, whether the canary can be built on uh, actual IBM uh, Z series hardware or Solaris box or an AIX box. Um, no. So so currently, um, what we optimize for is removing your pain, and and in part. Uh, we don't just do it because we're nice. Uh, we do it because removing your pain removes our pain. And and so if if you have to uh, do that sort of building, it ends up uh, with a good chance that A, it goes wrong, or B, you don't end up doing it because you've got other stuff to do or you bump into complications. And, and so literally, our number one way is you've got hardware. Plug this in and it runs. Um, and, and beyond that, we've gone for where there's good packages. So here's a VMX file. Here's a uh, OVF. Here's a uh, EC2 instance that boots. And, and in all of those cases, uh, what you're looking for is, here's a packaged way to run an OS. Run this really light OS, and it'll do all of this work for you. Um, but what's super cool about that question is uh, it leads us on to the next part of the, of the talk, which is Canary tokens, because there will totally be times that your answer is not to drop an entire machine. Um, in that case, what you want is to drop a small tripwire on your own equipment. And for that, what we're going to do uh, is talk Canary tokens. Um, so, so I'll go on to Canary tokens uh, and, and we'll talk about, uh, we'll, we'll uh, come back to, to the questions. Um, in, in terms of canaries, like I said, at this point, we deployed all over. Um, we've caught people all over the world. Um, and like, like we're particularly proud of the fact that our NPS score um, is ridiculously high. Um, and that's because uh, of a few reasons, but mainly it's because we, we make a few promises and, and we try really hard to keep those promises. Um, we deployed uh, on all seven continents um, and, and we're really proud of the fact that uh, customers give us unsolicited love. So, so if you go to canary.tools forward slash love, you'll see a bunch of people uh, talking about how they used canaries. And, and typically when you see something like this, where someone says, um, if you're wondering if it works, yes, it does, um, then you can assume that actually uh, a canary somewhere has just saved someone um, from a really bad weekend. Um, so, so again, um, we think lots of people spend a lot of money on marketing, but, but the thing that we're most proud of is actually having customers uh, just go out and, and say nice things about us. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll skip through these because even uh, I don't want to see uh, all of those tweets. Um, and we're going to start uh, talking instead about Canary tokens. Now, where Canaries are uh, effectively fake operating systems, um, tokens... Uh, are tiny tripwires that, that you get to, uh, to drop on your network. And uh, we're going to look at it uh, for a change. I'm actually going to demo it uh, on the Canary console. So if you're a Canary customer, um, what you should be seeing is uh, right at the top, something called Canary tokens. Um, and if you uh, go to a brand new console and go to Canary tokens, you should see nothing. And, and when I click to create one, it's going to give you a rather terse screen that says, okay, uh, here's all the types of tokens that you can deploy. Um, and you'll see a whole bunch of them. And, and this is 
it was really deceptive because like I was talking to someone a little while back and and they remarked that <clears throat> almost all of these tokens are an entire black hat talk on their own and and while that seems generous for some really simple tokens for some of the more complex ones they really are and and so it it automates and gives a lot of power to defenders um and and it's kind of hidden in a really simple interface um so if i take a look uh, if i show you the simple uh, vanilla web token um, let's do this um instead so so i'm just going to uh, make sure that we've got the console open on one side ha also to get with virtual desktops um i'm going to make sure that we've got our console open on one side and our canary tokens uh, open down here and and i'm going to say okay let's create this web token and a web token um is just like a, a web bug that you used to and i'm going to say uh, we're going to put this on harun's desktop create this token and what you should see at this point is it's gone and it's created this uh url this unique url um which we can then copy and like we said in the memo put it on harun's desktop and the logic here is simple when an attacker finds it he surfs to that url and we get an alert telling us hey that url that was left on harun's desktop has got clicked the person came from this ip and here's information on their browser uh all of those details so again useful um but really simple okay so so let's just mark that token as seen um and the other token that's dead simple is a dns token okay so we can say dns token and we can say a uh, webinar demo okay and what we're going to do here is now give you a host name and with this host name it means that if you can somehow find a way to get an attacker to do a look up on this host an alert's going to come through to your console to say listen that host name that nobody should have known about someone just looked it up now again it's it's a really simple uh token but once you've got these two tokens you've got the primitives to do such interesting stuff so so for example the the simple obvious uh, one is you can start embedding these inside of documents right so we can say a uh, webinar word doc okay and and what's going to happen here is it's now going to say okay i've created a word doc for you um and the moment an attacker opens this word doc um they get their doc and you get your message telling you hey listen this doc which really shouldn't have been opened someone opened it from this ip address okay and and obviously once you start thinking about the possibilities you can start thinking of really interesting places uh, to put these tokens um i'll talk about two more tokens uh, just because we won't have the time to go through all of them but this cloned website token again super simple you put it on your web server you put it on your oa server and when an attacker clones that website normally as a precursor to a phishing attack you'll get back an uh, alert telling you listen your website oa.company.com is now running on oa.geocities.company.com you probably want to check this out um again your false positive rate is almost nothing because why would your site be cloned and running on foreign uh, uh, address space but when it happens it absolutely saves your tail and and then the the one that's super interesting to me um if you go down here uh, you see the aws api key and i'm going to say uh putting this on harun's machine um again um and create it and essentially what you're going to get here is a working valid aws api key okay and it it looks like valid api creds because they are valid api creds um essentially you take that you put it on harun's machine and and when the sort of attacker who you care about compromises harun whether he compromises him at home or at the coffee shop he absolutely can't resist using this token right because potentially it's access to our entire cloud 
And the moment they use it, you get your alert that tells you, listen, bad stuff is happening um, with the token on Harun's machine. You should go check why. Um, we've got customers who've downloaded, uh, who, who've installed something like 20,000 of this single Canary token alone in their network. And, and of course, one of the reasons, or well, the two good reasons why they can, is because if you're a Canary customer, you get your own token server with the ability to mint an unlimited number of tokens. So literally, we, we don't restrict this. Download a thousand fake Word docs and put them on every server that you've got. Um, download 20,000 Amazon API keys and put them in every AWS instance that you have. And when you get owned, an attacker has to use it and you get a really cheap but really high fidelity message telling you that badness is happening. And, and on the one hand, what makes it possible is the fact that we give these away free to you. But on the other hand, what makes it happen is that everything in Canary is drivable via RESTful API. So what you can do really simply is um, if, if you're looking at my screen now, what, what you end up seeing is we've got this set up with multiple domain controllers, multiple Windows boxes all over the world. Um, and you can literally go in and with just one uh, quick PowerShell script, you can say, listen, connect to my Canary console, create a fake uh, Word doc, and store them on every machine in my enterprise. And, and literally, that's going to take you seconds to run. So, so we've got the script available in our GitHub. And, and what you'll see is just magically on all of your machines, this token showing up. And, and again, for the four minutes that it's going to take you to do this deployment, what you're waiting for is the day someone's snooping around in New York or someone's compromised uh, the server in New York. Um, they find the file and you get your alert telling you, hey, listen, this file that was dropped on, on your New York DC that nobody should have been seeing just got opened. Chances are something bad is happening. Um, so, so the combination of really powerful alerting that's free, that's drivable via an API, um, ends up being a real superpower for a defender um, because you get all of this uh, potential um, and for the most part, uh, it just works. Um, I'll, I'll uh, wrap right now and take questions. Um, but again, the main thing, uh, the main message that, that I want you to take away is both with Canary and Canary tokens, um, deploying them is dead simple. Um, it's dead easy. Um, in fact, two days ago, uh, Tim Malcolm Vetter, who's the uh, head of pen testing for Walmart, um, was asked, uh, what do you find, uh, what technology impresses you as an offensive security guy? And, and it's great for us because literally straight out of his mouth, he goes, canaries. I really like canaries. Um, and, and he talks about uh, why he likes them. Um, but, but essentially, uh, he goes through a, re a list and says, look, they're so easy to deploy. And at this point, we've seen consistently, which is canaries and tokens end up catching attackers and catching red teams. And, and the second time those teams work on that network, when they now know that canaries and canary tokens are in play, it's not like they any better off. In some ways, it's worse because now with every cred that they find, with every file that they find, they second guessing themselves because they don't know if they can use it or if they can't. And, and anyone who's done pen testing will tell you that com meaningful compromises are deaths by a thousand cuts, right? You find the cred here, you find a file there, you find a box here. But when you don't know if you can use any of those things that you find, it really ties your hands behind your back. Um, so, so yeah, we, we totally agree with, uh, with Tim, uh, put them anywhere, put them everywhere. Um, I'll, I'll stop here uh, for questions. Uh, before I do, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for your time. Um, you can scream at us uh, at Thinkst Canary or at Harun Mir uh, on Twitter. 
Um, uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Uh, ping us anytime. We'd be super happy to talk Canary um, or give you demos that are specific um, to to your org. Um, I'll stop here um, to hit more of the questions. Um, so far, there hasn't been any uh, any other questions. Just a lot of thank you for the, for the good presentation. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So, so uh, I think we will do the other rare thing of letting people go early. Um, again, thanks so much. Um, ping us on Twitter. Um, let us know. Um, we'd be happy to take uh, any questions. Thanks for taking the time. Um, and thanks for listening to our bad accents. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye.